Okay, well this is Sean Perry with VintageRock.com and I'm here with Lisa Johnson. Um, she is the photographer. She put together this beautiful book here, 108 Rockstar Guitars, which we've covered on Vintage Rock. And Lisa's here at NAMM every year and she's, she's putting a new book together. Why don't you tell us a little about that? Yeah, well, it's a follow-up to the first book, 108 Rockstar Guitars, and uh, this one's taking about seven years in the making. Uh, we got four of Jimi Hendrix guitars nice. in this next next one. Uh, his uh, Woodstock Flying V, I mean, his, woods, his white Woodstock Strat, and his Love Drops Flying V guitar is in it, and his uh, Acoustic Semitis guitar. And uh, Kurt Cobain's one of his Strats, Steve Hackett's Zemitis is in it. All, all the Iron Maiden boys, all the Metallica wow. boys. Yeah, so yeah, I'm very, very, fun. very excited. Yeah, and we've got, um, we've got Vicky Peterson uh, from the Bangles mm -hmm. is in it. So we have, you know, a few more girls. Uh, Nita Strauss will wow. be in this next one, and Jennifer Batten. So uh, this 108 guitars in the book again? Yes, yeah, it's another 108. Another 108. Stars. Cool. Yeah. And I mean, just looking at this book, if I can, just the style of photography, it's, it's just so unique. Well, what I try to do is capture the wear and tear details of the guitar. So you can see this is John Mellencamp's guitar, right. where he's been playing this Martin for years. Um, you know, Satriani, the night before I photographed this guitar, right. it got dropped in Las Vegas. Uh oh. So it, it, it is a little road wear here. Yeah, so you get all the little nuance, nuances and cracks and and the wear and tear. Exactly, it's like how the guitar personifies the artist. Like here's uh, KK Downing, and when he got this guitar, he thought it looked a little naked. Right. So he pounded some uh, some tacks in it himself. Wow. You know, with precision, you can see he's done a nice job of it. Um, you know, we, this is a cool shot of uh, Dave Mustaine's Flying V with his custom Dave Mustaine pickups. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't see this up close and personal unless right. you're up close and personal with the right. guitar. So I have the opportunity to get close to the guitars and photograph some of the details that fans can't see otherwise, because they can't get that close to the guitars. Like the back the back side of guitars too, like uh, this is um, Dean DeLeo's guitar. Mm -hmm. And you can see the back of it, how it's all scratched up from his bell buckle or whatever, right. you know. Right. So it shows the wear and tear details of the guitars that personify the artist without them being in the image because you see how they hold the guitar, how they play the guitar, what's left behind from them playing the guitar. Mm -hmm. And that's what fans can't usually see because they're too far away, right, you know, right. watching it from a distance. Now you said in the new book you have uh, some, some of Jimi Hendrix's guitars. Yeah, I'm so excited that I had the opportunity to photograph Jimmy's, the, the, the Woodstock, you know, his, right. his white Strat. Okay. Everyone calls it the white Woodstock Strat. Right. Uh, and you can see all the wear and tear on it from his rings, you know, and he, he had his string left left handed, right. you know. So on the, the lower left horn, there's all these marks and gouges that aren't in on a regular guitar because they're not played left handed, but uh -huh. he wore all those big rings so you can see all the detail of how he handled that guitar. And um, I'm so excited to have his, uh, his Zemitis, his acoustic guitar from that video. You see the, hear my train of coming and he's sitting on the bar stool. That's right. the guitar that he's playing. Um, and then his Love Drops Flying V that he hand painted. Right. And on the inside of, of the V, he, he wrote Love Drops. Nice. You know, his heart and soul was in that guitar, and um, that's what I'm I'm capturing is the soul of the artist, really. Now, does his sister have those guitars, or who has them? No, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame oh, okay. has them. Yeah, I, pho I photographed them all. I, pho I photographed the white Strat uh, at the Experience Music Project oh, because okay. Paul Allen owns that guitar. Right. But I got permission from Janie Hendrix first, right, and Janie. she said, "Well, you have my blessing to photograph the guitar, but you go now. You got to ask the owner." Yeah which right. is Paul Allen. Right. So then I approached the museum and said, you know, Janie gives me her blessing, but you own it. So, you know, <laughs> um, we'd love to photograph that guitar. And, and they said yes. So I did that. And then um, a friend of mine uh, brokered the sale 
of three Hendrix guitars, the Zemitis, one of the Strats, and the Love Drops Flying V mm -hmm. to a private collector who had them on loan to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I went to Cleveland and shot those guitars there. Wow. And I knew those guys because I shot Randy Bachman's guitar at the Rock Hall several years ago for, the, right. for this book. So. Um, I have a nice working relationship with them, so they let me in to shoot Jimmy's guitars. Well, I mean, your pursuit in doing, getting these photos, is is part of the, is a big part of the story, really. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to be unrelentless. Right. Uh, you have to say over and over again, I need to get access to those guitars, right. uh, and it's also being patient because it's all a matter of timing. Like, for example, working with Jimmy, it, it took two years to schedule that shoot with the museum wow. because they're changing exhibits around and things like that. It's not always the easiest thing for to take a, a guitar out of an exhibit. Uh -huh. So you have to be patient. And also, too, you have to be patient with artists because they're on tour and, you know, right. sometimes the timing doesn't work out. So when, when I get a no answer or I get a no, I don't take it personally. I just ask again. You know, I ask again when they're coming around me, if they're in Vegas or Los Angeles or I'm traveling somewhere, or I know where they are. I just ask again. And um, more often than not, I get a yes after a while. I mean, at this point, I've shot probably a good 300 guitars at this point, which I'm pretty proud of because I'm a woman. I'm a woman in rock. Uh, and I, th I think I'm the only person that has photographed this many famous guitars and I'm a woman right, on top of right. that so I think that's a, an accolade for you know, being a woman in rock very yeah. very cool um, I mean now uh, when you put you put these photos together you probably show them to the artists if they're living of course um, what's the reaction they love them yeah they love it I mean when Brian Setzer got his copy of the book he wrote back and he said this is the classiest guitar book I've ever seen. I, can, okay? I, I agree with that, yeah. You know, Robbie Krieger said, I'm proud to have this on my coffee table. And Ted Nugent said, this book is so heavy, I had to build a new coffee table <laughs> to accommodate it. <laughs> they are heavy, yeah. The hard covers weighs in at nine pounds. So, wow. you know, wow. I think the soft cover weighs almost five pounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, and the, the next uh, version of the book is also going to be the same size as the hardcover edition was. So it'll be another nine pounder. Wow. So the next book, uh, when, when will it be out again? Fall 19, uh, 20, 2019. Okay. Yeah, so fall 2019. And you'll, you'll put out a hard cover and a soft cover? It will be a hard cover first. Okay. And then the soft cover generally comes out the next year after okay. that. Yeah. So um, 2020, NAM is when I'll be showcasing it at okay. NAM because it'll come out in the fall of 2019. And then NAM will be in 2020. So, yeah. And will this be 108 Rockstar Guitars 2 or, or what's the title? We are coming up with the title. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's going to be a cool one. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be an incredible follow-up to this first one because the first one's got Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, Eric yeah. Clapton, Les Paul wrote the foreword right. for the first version. Um, All friend of yours. I mean, Zach Wilde is in this one, Billy Gibbons, Chrissy Hines, right. Bonnie Raitt. Uh, we have some heavy hitters in the first volume, but the second volume, we got, we got Hendrix. We right. have Steve Hackett. We have we have all the Iron Maiden boys. We've got all the Metallica boys. Yeah. Um, we have such an incredible lineup in this next book as well that it's equally, you know, as solid as, as this one is. So uh, Billy Sheehan's in it. I got several bass players. Geezer right. Butler's bass is going to be in this one too. And Billy Sheehan just was an awarded last night at uh, right. at the Metal History Awards, which right. is a fantastic show. And uh, Bill Ward was there getting an award. So. Uh, it was really beautiful to hear the, the things he said about his bandmates. Yeah. And uh, it was very heartwarming. And, you know, that's what this is about. This, my work is a celebration of their work, you know, the celebration of, of the music, a celebration of the artistry and craftsmanship that goes into the making of a guitar and what the artist's contribu contributions are into what they want as a signature guitar. And then, really celebrating their music and music takes us to another realm you know into nirvana yeah. so um, that's why I called my book 108 because 108 is a cosmic number right. takes us into another another realm and everyone says a hundred greatest or a hundred one greatest so as a yogi 
as a, I'm a teacher, a yoga teacher, I wanted it to be 108 to add that cosmic element that music is into the book itself. And even my book cover, I don't put a guitar on the cover. Right. I create a beautiful, this is a lotus, mm -hmm. and it's got nine lotus flowers because 108 totals not the number nine. Okay. And in numer numerology, the number nine symbolizes endings and beginnings, transformation. So there's even 27 guitar headstocks that go around this, which two plus seven is nine. Oh, and by the way, speaking of 27, the day I shot Jimi Hendrix guitar at the Experience Music Project, I also photographed Kurt Cobain's guitar. Okay. Both of them were Strats. Both of them were from Seattle. Both of them I shot on the same day. Both of them were left-handed. Right. And both of them died at age 27. Members of the 27 Club, yeah. as they say. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So there was some synergy that day. And then I went to Jimmy's grave after I shot his guitar. Right. And there was one other couple there. And after I... I, they, I said, would you like me to take their photograph? Because they were trying to take pictures of themselves. And in my mind, I, I just thought, I really need some time alone with Jimmy. You know, I just spent time with his guitar and I felt like his guitar was talking to me. And, and so I, I wanted the space to myself. And I right. said to them, would you like me to take your photograph? And they said, sure. So I took a bunch of really nice photographs of them and they said, thank you. And they got in their car and they drove off. And I literally was at Jimmy's space and is around all of, all of these this beautiful um, memorial that the family made right. for him yeah. and I got to spend about a half an hour just That's all nice. by myself I, with I Jimmy. I visited that many years ago yeah. myself. It's a beautiful land. It really is. Yeah. And his Jimmy's there. Here, I think his, uh, his grandmother I think. I'm yeah. not sure his about that. But did you notice like the, those big huge uh, granite etchings of his? Yeah. Yeah. All the girls with their lipstick, they kissed Jimmy's face. Wow, I didn't notice that. When I was there, there must have been two, like 400 kiss lipstick kisses wow. on all of them. There's three different ones where there's yeah. a granite facade where they've etched Jimmy's image. Right. And his cheeks are just covered with lipstick kisses. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Jimmy. Well, you know, you mentioned Bill Ward, and it got me to think, have you ever thought about doing drums you're the second person that t this weekend <laughs> asking me that and you're not the second person overall I've had several people say I should do drums and also a lot of people have said I should do amps okay and uh, yes I, I see that I I'm just such a lover of the guitar right. and as many guitars as I've already photographed there's so many more to get right and so I'm not I'm not done with guitars okay. um, and it's it's a lot to take on another subject matter honestly I, I have my hands full with right. with just requesting guitars and photographing them and editing and creating books so I'm not gonna say no to it um, I'm gonna because I'm getting to know all the people in the industry and I think that it's a door that could open for me mm -hmm. down the line it's right. a lifelong project I'm not gonna stop right, so right. Um, I have I have probably another a third book on rock guitars that I'd like to do and then I have I've already started jazz guitars, blues guitars, okay. country guitars and I'd like to do immortal guitars uh, and then you know, amps and, and some drums could, could fit in there somewhere down the line. So you got a lot of different ideas and maybe drums someday down the line. Yes, and a lot of encouragement from guys like you. I really, really appreciate that, awesome. that you think it of made it to even do yeah. something else. So well, they I'm, are awesome books. And So what, now where can people find out more about what you guys are doing? Well, the, um, the best, first of all, my website, right. 108rockstarguitars.com. Okay. And right now, Hal Leonard is offering a special deal okay. on their website, which I'll tell you. This is um, a special promotion that we're doing, uh, backwingstore.com forward slash rockstar108, free domestic shipping, and they are giving 36% off, plus oh, okay. free domestic shipping. So you can get this book at their website or on amazon.com, awesome. that's easy to get. Awesome. Or come by and see me at NAMM, okay. and I'll sign a copy for you. And you have that guitar right here, right? Is that... I, have, I have Bo Diddley's guitar right here. Right. This is called The Bad Dude, and this guitar will be featured in my next book. Mm -hmm. And this guitar, Bo built himself. Wow. And it's a very special guitar. I mean, Bo Diddley, what an incredible human being right. he was, way ahead of his time. 
Uh, in the next book, another one of his guitars will be featured called the Get Drum guitar, and it's a very odd-shaped guitar that he put a whole little synthesizer attached onto the front of it mm -hmm. so that he could sound like a full band when he performed. If he was playing at a wedding or whatever, wow. you know, he, he could just show up and be the full band himself. He was way ahead of his time. Yeah. Really. I mean, now you can get those things that they're like, they're like this big and you can just snap right. it onto your guitar. Right. But, you know, he had these big, huge pieces that he would attach onto his guitar. That, one, that one's embedded. Right. Uh, but this one, I mean, look at all these dials and shit. Wow. Who even knows what all that's for? Yeah, no kidding. He's got a little equalizer going on up here. Right. He's got some kind of a Cadillac decal here. <laughs> yeah. We've even got his guitar strap. Wow. He, he always had this security officer, you know, wow. police badge. So, yeah, he was a special soul. So, Charlie, Charlie Tona, he's around here somewhere. Uh, Bo left all of his guitars with him when he passed away. Keep him in safekeeping. And so he's actually, um, this is the very last issue of Guitar, a fiction auto magazine. Uh -huh. It's out of print now. But the very last issue, they did a story on him. And these are all of his. Oh, wow. This, is, this right here is the Get Drum guitar right there. Wow. Look at that big, huge. Oh, my God. <laughs> mini, mini player he had on there. Wow. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Well, Lisa, uh, I want to thank you for talking to us today. Wow, look at that. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. All I right. really appreciate you're always checking in on me gotcha. every gotcha. step of the way, so okay. I appreciate it. You rock. Vintage well, rock. Vintage, vintage rock, rock rocks. That's right. <laughs> and 108 Rockstar Guitar rocks as well. Yeah. Here we are at NAMM 2018. Another year, another one knocked out. Here we go. Bye.